guys, welcome to Betrayal of the Body, Nikita here. Today we're going to talk about my seizures. Finally, right? I keep bringing them up and I never really talk about them. Today we're going to talk about them. In July 2010, six months into chemo, two months after my kidney ruptured, I began having seizures. My very first one, I was at home hanging out with some friends. I overheard my children getting into an argument, got up to go referee them. And before I reached them, I collapsed on the floor and began having a seizure. I had two seizures at home before my friend was able to get me in the car. And then I just kind of kept seizing all the way to the hospital and was going in and out of these weird seizures the whole time I was there. Um, the emergency room doctors really freaked out. They didn't really know what to do. So they put me in an ambulance and sent me to San Diego. Um, I was hospitalized there for several days for observation and they performed an EEG to try and determine what was going on. When the EEG came back normal, they determined that I was suffering from pseudo seizures. Now basically what pseudo seizures are, they are a symptom of a disorder called conversion disorder. And basically what happens is when a person experiences too much trauma, they can sometimes convert that trauma into physical manifestations um, that appear to be real problems but have no source. And so because they didn't come back on the EEG, they assumed that this is what was happening to me and referred me to a neurologist for follow-up care. This neurologist that I followed up with, he decided to start me out on Ativan. He told me every time I had a seizure to take the Ativan. Within two weeks, it became really clear that this, this drug wasn't right for me. And so I called him and asked him if he could switch me to something else. And so we decided that Topamax would be our next step, um, that it was designed to treat migraines, but sometimes helps with seizures as well. And because I had migraines, that hopefully, you know, it would help at least one of the problems. Hopefully it helped my, my seizures. And um, so I started taking that. I was on that medication for about two months and I realized that I was developing severe gingivitis at a very rapid rate. And I saw a dentist, he told me to stop taking the medication immediately and it was already too late to save my bottom for front row teeth, first four front row teeth. Um, he said that the gingivitis was too severe, that, they, that I would lose them and there's nothing I could really do to stop it. Uh, and so I immediately stopped taking the Topamax. I did not call my neurologist right away. I just stopped taking the Topamax. And then I called him, you know, a couple of days later and scheduled an appointment. When I saw him, he completely flipped out. He told me that it had, because I quit cold turkey, that this is proof that I was faking my condition. And had I had a real problem that quitting this medication, cold turkey could have killed me. And all this stuff, he was like really angry at me for not, for quitting this medication. And he then proceeded to diagnose me with five different psych disorders. He diagnosed me with the pseudo seizures. He diagnosed me with schizophrenia. He diagnosed me with bipolar one disorder. He diagnosed me with borderline personality disorder and manic depression. And I just was appalled at him giving me these diagnoses. It felt like a punishment. It felt like he was mad at me because I didn't do what he said. And so now I was being punished by being labeled a severe psych patient. And that no one would ever take me seriously again. That's how I felt. And so I felt very betrayed by doctors in general, by the medical field in general. And I just said, I'm done. I'm done. I'll live with all these problems. I'll just let them kill me. I'm going home. And you guys can bite me for all I care. And I stopped seeing doctors for several years. So flash forward a couple of years. September 2013, I remarried. And in December 2013, we decided to move to Colorado and make a lives for ourselves there. Um, in Colorado, we both found jobs right away. Uh, we were working at a manufacturing facility and I was a machine operator. And so I knew <laughs> that being a machine operator with at this point about 15, 10 to 15 seizures a day, 
probably going to be a liability issue. So I kept it to myself. I know, I know, bad idea. Nothing really bad happened though, okay, so... But yeah, that's what I did. Um, I didn't tell anybody that I was having seizures. I kept it to myself. Whenever I had a seizure, I would just say that I'd had, I had to go to the bathroom and I'd have a seizure in the bathroom. Because by this point, I had learned to identify um, my warning signs and knew when one was coming well in advance. So I was able to pull this off for about nine months. In October of 2014, things kind of came to a crashing halt. I had really pushed myself beyond my breaking point. I had been switched to third shift, which was from 10 o'clock at night to 6 o'clock in the morning. And I was working 10 to 12 hour days, so usually from 6 to 6 or from 8 to 6. Um, but I was working six or seven days a week because our department was behind. So they had mandatory overtime for everyone in our department. And I was really getting ran down to the bone. I was missing a lot of work. I had maxed out on all my leave. I had maxed out on all my sick time. Um, and I was having multiple seizures throughout my shifts. I was getting to the point where I couldn't even get through an eight hour shift. And I confided in my coworker on what was going on. And she told me that there were plenty of employees at the company that had epilepsy and that there's no reason for me to hide them in the bathroom and that I should tell my supervisor what was going on. And maybe that there was something they could do to help me. Or maybe that that would be an excuse to get me out of the mandatory overtime we were all having to do. So I did. I went to my supervisor and he told me to take some time off to go on temporary disability and see some doctors and to, help, to figure out what was going on. Hopefully I could get it under control. And at this time I had a new sense of hope. I had private insurance and I was in a new place. And so I figured, yeah, you know what, maybe I will. I, and so I went and I started seeing doctors. I did some research and found out that the best doctor to see when you have conversion door disorder with pseudo seizures is a neuropsychologist. So I started seeing him. We began doing CBT, cognitive behavioral therapy. Um, we went about six months. And my employer said that my short-term disability was up and that I either needed to come back to work or go on long-term disability. And so I went to my doctors and they said, there's absolutely no way we're releasing you back to work. You are not any close. You're getting worse. And um, so I was like, okay, well, then I need long-term disability. And my employer's like, well, you've only been with the company you know, prior to going on short-term disability for 10 months, not 12, so you don't qualify for long-term disability. We're gonna have to terminate you. And so I was terminated. I continued seeing the neuropsychologist twice a week, all the way up until circumstances led to my husband and I moving back to California. But before we did, my neuropsychologist had come to the conclusion that while we were making progress with my psychological problems, we were not making progress with the seizures and that they were progressively getting worse. And so he determined that he did not believe that they were psychologically induced, that this was not pseudo seizures, it was not conversion disorder, that I needed to go back and have more tests ran. Seems how up to this point the only test that had ever been done was one brief one hour EEG. And so we did. We went back to the drawing board. In October 2015 we moved back to California and I hit the ground hard. I started hitting, seeing all of the doctors I could I had a very severe seizure on the way, right after the move. Um, I fell and hurt my back really bad. And it really made me go, no, we are going to get to the bottom of this. So I started seeing a bunch of doctors. Um, and for the first time, no one was really accusing me of faking it. No one was saying this was in my head. 
they all really believed that this was a physical problem and they just didn't know what it was. And so we ran tons of tests. I saw too many specialists to count. I saw multiple neurologists of different subspecialties. No one can figure it out. All we know is what it isn't. Attached you will find clips of my seizures that we were able to videotape um, in hopes that maybe someone will recognize them and have some idea on what's going on with me. One important thing to know while watching these videos of my seizures is that I'm fully conscious throughout this. I have no control whatsoever. I have lost my bowels. I've lost my urine. I've lost my, I, I, I've thrown up. I, I have literally absolutely no control. I've actually stopped breathing at, at times during these episodes, but I'm experiencing it 100%. I can hear everything that's being said around me. I can feel my body twitching and, and jerking. I can feel the retching. I can feel the cramping and, and convulsing, it, and it hurts. But I'm awake. I just don't look it. These are what her seizure looked like. This one's kind of not very active. Just kind of slumped over a little bit, as you can see. There she is, switched on a little bit. And. Sorry about that, guys. If I can get. <coughs> anywhere from two minutes to three minutes like she was saying unless I try and wake her up out of it not really trying to this time so you guys can see what they fully look like that's her snapping out of it say hi everybody like, share, subscribe, comment. I'm still desperately looking for an answer to what's happening to me. It's been eight years and to date we are now at about 20 seizures on a good day and on a bad day more than 40. And it doesn't look like it's going to get any better anytime soon. So please stay tuned while I tell you about all my other problems and share this video with your friends. Help me find help.